your question always has to be, and, and, and it has nothing to do with AMC, uh, and nothing to do with GME or anything that you possibly got stuck in. Your question is, is a trade that's on deck better? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So happy uh, Super Bowl weekend, no matter uh, what your team is, or even if you don't have a, a dog in the fight. Um, sometimes just it's just so much better just to kind of veg out kind of clear your head for three hours, kind of a, like almost like on a national scale, some people overseas as well, and kind of just decompress for three hours, take whatever's going on in our lives uh, to kind of just have a good time, right? With some, uh, with some beverages, some uh, snacks, whatever your, your uh, cocktail is. So hopefully you guys are having a, a blessed weekend. So uh, let's talk about the tape um, <laughs> in Monsters, right? I mean, the stock market is uh, it doesn't make a difference who the president is. It doesn't make a difference where the stages are of this global pandemic that we've been so far fighting since last uh, January, February. Uh, it's been you know over a year now. It just uh, in all these crazy times, and you look at everything that's happened: uh, the Dow, the S and P, uh, the Russell, the Nasdaq. They're all at all-time highs. And if you look at the scoreboard, I'm just kind of. Reading it off here, you got the S&P up nearly 5%. You have the Dow, which underperformed all of them, up only 4%. And you had the NASDAQ surging over 6%. That's, it's absolutely insane. And no matter what happened during uh, earnings season, we're kind of right towards the end of it right now, especially with technology. If you look at every single stock in technology, for the exception of Google, who reported their earnings and actually kept their gains, right? You had every single one of them. You had Amazon, had great numbers, but they initially sold it off. Netflix had great numbers, they initially sold it off. Had great numbers on Apple, they initially sold it off. Tesla, right? Its numbers are fine, they weren't horrible, right? They were fine, but initially they sold it off on and on and on and on. But again, when you look at where we are towards the end of the week, and especially where we could be going into next week, how can you not be bullish? Uh, I think the, big, the biggest lesson uh, of the week, unfortunately, came um, in retail, right? The, the ever-ending you know, ever saga between uh, retail and you know, uh, Robin Hood and retail versus the hedge funds and Wall Street bets and pets and everything else in between versus each other, hold the line, diamond... At the end of the day, you know, unfortunately, you saw what happened. Uh, people believed in the idea that no matter what they buy at any price, they're going to be fine as long as they're uh, unified. And the problem is we've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks, again, this is the first time kind of listening to the broadcast, so you could buy whatever you want. Again, nobody will ever dispute uh, than Robinhood and Ameritrade and all these other uh, companies that kind of join forces to ban the buying of all these meme stocks. But the moral of the story is you don't have... Uh, you don't have the right to buy any single stock at any given interval, and all you need to do is look what happened. To, you know, look what happened to GameStop this week. Look what happened uh, to AMC. And and the the worst part about all this is, it's the idea that you can continuously throw good money after bad. I could understand. You know, you're a novice investor and you chase Tesla to 900, right? I get it. It's weird, but I get it. It's an awesome company, fantastic product. You can say what you want. It is what it is. You see Teslas everywhere, uh, especially in um, especially in the suburbs. You see them everywhere. They're like they're literally like like uh, like uh, like like stop signs. They're absolutely everywhere. I can understand buying Amazon at thirty five hundred. I get it. I can understand buying Apple at one fifty. I get it. They're Apple. They're Tesla. They're Amazon. They're Microsoft. Right. They're Netflix. I get it. They're fantastic companies. Growth stories. Great business models. Enormous amounts of you know enormous amounts of investor uh, investor uh, love. Okay, I think I think, but AMC really of all the money you can be putting putting in this euphoric market that you see stocks 
continuously moving on very, very aggressive technicals. And yes, you'll get some frothy moves like you've seen in the AMCs of the world or you saw in the game stocks of the world. But is you, you have to ask yourself a very, very fair question. In this rabid bull market, and I've stated for a very, very long time, in, in a rabid bull market, there's absolutely no reason to be stuck in anything that's not performing. You're, you're in a tremendous giant window of opportunity that if one stock is not performing, go to the next one because people are still bidding up these ridiculously crazy moves on a daily basis, whether it's on a beta name like Zoom did on Friday or one of these uh, crazy AM... CGs of the world. I don't even know if that's, yeah. But, but the point is, there's something moving that you always have to self, ask yourself a question. Am I in a trade that will give me the biggest bang for my buck today, right? Not what happened yesterday, not what happened a week ago when it went to 20 and it got chased up there and it squeezed some funds and yada, 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 big snowball effect. Your question always has to be, and, and, and it has nothing to do with AMC uh, and nothing to do with GME or anything that you possibly got stuck in. Your question is, is a trade that's on deck better, right? Is a trade, for example, like Tesla, a better value for my money if it confirms this channel up here? Is a trade is better for my money in AMC or a stock like Amazon who's put in a channel now that if it takes out, it could really, really run? You ask yourself a question, is AMC better than potentially a move on Netflix with a channel it already established? Zoom broke out on Friday, right? We talked about Zoom on Wednesday night. I love this channel. It confirmed. And your question is, is AMC, right? Are you stuck in AMC? Is your money better served off in AMC or GME or hundreds of other companies that are just not doing anything. And you're sitting there and you're hoping and praying that one day these things are gonna wake up. But at the end of the day, when you turn around and say, Apple has a quarter of a billion dollars in cash, right? Quarter of a billion dollars in cash. Amazon is the juggernaut of the universe. Is my money better off in, 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 in AMC that I'm long at 12, 13, 14, 15, 10, 9, 8. Is it better off there on a company that's doom and gloom about to go bankrupt before all this run-up happened? Is my money better allocated in this or something that I can recoup my money in other vehicles that are real companies that technically if they start moving, you know, I can ride that train technically without the hope and the please God and the hold my hands and the diamond hands and the diamond pets, whatever the hell it's all called. Is my money better served there? And these are all questions, unfortunately, there's a lot of traders that have to answer this weekend. A lot of new traders, unfortunately, bought you know these stocks at tremendous levels. I get it. You got caught up in the euphoria. You did nothing wrong, okay? You did absolutely nothing wrong that myself and my friends did back in 2000. And unfortunately, the only difference between now and what we saw in 2000 when the bubble bursted, nobody warned us, hey, by the way, you're chasing euphoria everything eventually is gonna pop and you're gonna die, right? For weeks and weeks and weeks, and we've been saying this, anybody who's been trading for more than 15 minutes to say, hey, look, this is gonna end one way. We don't know, right? You don't know, maybe AMC goes to 30, maybe it goes to, to 90, but maybe it goes back to zero, right? Or maybe, obviously I'm exaggerating, but maybe it goes back to a dollar, right? Isn't this where fair value companies go to die when the euphoria is, is over and there's nobody left to buy the dip? And there's absolutely no reason for momentum to, to, to be established in the name because the players are gone. And all of a sudden, fundamentals take over. And then you realize, well, AMC, well, it's, it's, it's a movie company. It's not Amazon. It's not Apple. They're not coming out with the eye toilet. It's a movie. It's, you know, they own movie theaters. Okay, raise your hand if you're running out to go to a movie theater. So the moral of the story is this. Look, it, it's not one of those, I to, it's, it's never I told you so, okay? It's never I told you so. It's more of... We've been through it. All of us have been trading for a long time. I've been doing this since the end of 98. We've been doing this. We've seen this happen. We've been talking about this in nausea. It will happen. You're allowed, again, whatever you want to buy. But don't shoot yourself in the process and then hope to God that a miracle cure is going to happen. Your stock is going to go back to uh, where you bought it. So, unfortunately, a lot of new traders, uh, you know, they got caught, right? They got caught, and now they have to make uh, a really... Uh, you know, really tough choice come Monday morning. You know, do I hold on to this thing and wait and hope to God in two, three weeks and two, three months and two, three years and 
10 years this thing comes back or is my money better suited for this tremendous run that the stock market has been on? And if you go through your charts and, it, and it's very, very easy to somebody, one of these new traders to turn around and say, well, Dan, I have a small account. I can't, you know, I can't be in Amazon or I can't be in Zoom. Well, what's wrong with stocks like MVIS who broke out in the last couple of days, right? What's wrong with this? Correct? Like, what's wrong with what a stock like this? Is a $10 stock. You're in a $10 name right now that you're holding. There's a lot of names that you could be looking at that are in your price point that you could still do very, very well. The question is, you know, are you, are you willing to look at them? Are you willing to put yourself in a situation that says, well, my money is, is better off here or am I willing uh, to stay and pray and hope? Again, it's one of those questions, unfortunately, you have to uh, come to grips with. There is an answer. Uh, every single trader is built completely different. So I hope you know you guys are surviving. Uh, I've, I've never wished harm or negativity on anybody. It's just the more of a case of, you know, it's time to act like a grown up. You know, sometimes it does uh, take a lot of, you know, a lot of power and will to take a loss, but you know, life goes on, uh, your trading career will move on. And the moral of the story is, you know, next time around, when something does go from three to 20, you know, you're not buying it at 20. Something goes from 30 to 500, you're not buying it at 500. You're, there's better plays, and we always talk about better areas of value that your money can always thrive better than it is in a current situation. So other than that, guys, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, technically, again, we're all-time highs. Uh, market continues to look good. Uh, what I like about, first of all, great action last week. Uh, Friday, we saw some very, very good action as well. Zoom finally bro uh, broke out. We, you know, we, would talk, we, we talked about Zoom uh, on Wednesday, that this channel was very, very close. And you can see it's the continued theme. You're finding value, and the value never comes you know, up here, right? The value always comes on bottom channels. And if you put in your work every single day, like I always, uh, you know, really request and, and, and recommend, especially new traders to kind of train the mind uh, to identify areas of pure value, pure technical prowess that could do well for you, you'll always notice the same thing. The stocks that are doing the best, that have the biggest initial day one expansion measure potential are always coming off bottom channels. And if you do your homework this weekend, you'll find a lot of names for Monday that actually look pretty good. Matter of fact, let me give you guys a smaller cap name, right? Especially for you guys have, you know, again, small cap game is usually not my thing, but, I, but look, look at a stock, for example, like U, U O N E K, right? Just to give you an example, right? Is this the same stock? Might, might not be the same stock. Uh, never mind. It's not the same stock. This is just a name I kind of like for a continuation. But there, there's a lot of names. If you if you do your uh, if you do your research, especially in the small cap games, you could see where there's good value. Even this, even you you and okay, it looks pretty good. Look at the channel here, right? It's a pretty decent channel. It's not overextended. These small cap stocks are going nuts. Wouldn't be better for you to turn around and say, look, I would rather buy this thing on this channel with a little bit of expansion for a possible euphoric move. And I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying at least put yourself in a position that you can get a value move without a lot of downside, right? Look at the downside here. What, you know, what's the downside here? 20 cents, 15 cents for a possible in this type of market euphoric move. So it's just such a name that I'm looking at. Even a name uh, that I've been look that I've been you know long for three days. I'm long this thing from uh, $2.24. This is a name a couple of days ago. We started talking about they're buying the stock. Um, they were buying the 219, the February 19 $5 calls. If you go through all the uh, option scanners, you'll see they're, they're nonstop buying uh, the $5 calls. Look, at least I have a common sense to say, look, there's my range. Here's my rising support. My risk in the trade on the rising five-day moving average is like seven cents. If this indeed starts a cycle of more call buying, who knows? Maybe it goes to five. But at least I'm giving myself a puncher's chance. It's not overextended. There's a catalyst behind on the option buying. Give yourself a puncher's shot. GME is not a puncher's shot. AMC is not a puncher's shot. You know, these are, these are stocks that got ran up. They short squeeze, the trade is over, move on. So um, let's talk about some names that I do like for this week. Um, I like Amazon, right? Amazon woke up, it broke above the previous uh, day's high. Now it just needs to clear out this channel, right? Remember that really, really good earnings. If they could just clear out this channel here, look how much room you have. You have Netflix, correct? Netflix, you know, good earnings. It just needs to get above this channel here this week. If they could wake up, 
and this thing could take off. NVIDIA comes out with earnings soon, but you can see there's a channel here. It keeps on getting rejected off the same area here. But the point is, it's not that far from breaking out of head of earnings. So we're, we're watching this thing. Look at Apple. Beta, there's, there's a lot of good value coming up here in beta, guys. Look at Apple. Apple has been stuck here, got rejected once, twice, three times on the 10-day moving average. If Apple reclaims the 10-day moving average, this thing could go as well. So if you go through beta, there's only like 10 of them, you'll see how much good potential there is this week. Uh, ZM, and I, you know, ZM we talked about, fantastic move. ZM, not only did it, it, it take out that $400 level, the sneaky pivot, it took out 405, reclaimed the 50-day moving average, closed at 420. You have your initial move coming into this week to 430. If you saw the option activity uh, in, in Zoom, they were incredibly aggressive. They were coming for the week that's coming up. They were coming for the, the 430s, the 460, and the 470 calls. Right, And if they keep on doing that over and over and over again, like I've always said, they don't seem uncertain. So really, really good move here. So Friday session was very, very strong. You didn't have a lot of pivots, but the ones that went did incredibly well. Uh, Wimmy, uh, 1080, 11 needs to build. Not a big move. You know, I scalped it. Uh, you know, did okay with it. Here was Wimmy. It took out this 1080 level, uh, went to the 1130s. Not a huge move, but again, not every single trade uh, can be huge. The one channel I forgot to put in here, guys, just because if all you guys are trading on the Twitter feed versus the live webinar, um, you know, I set a lot of alerts throughout the, you know, throughout the month, throughout the weeks. Uh, we got an alert on Friday on GILT, and I apologize, it was just too fast of a move uh, off this $14 break. Uh, I got long, this thing This thing went to almost $17. Uh, really, really good move. Um, it's just unfortunately, I apologize for you guys, just on the Twitter feed, uh, we didn't have a chance to, to put it in there. Uh, BYND, I still like, it's not there yet. AI, I still like, it's not there yet. Uh, MVIS, really, really nice move. It actually broke out on Thursday. If you guys remember, we had a $10 pivot. It put in a high of 1088. So this was the pivot 109011 uh, needs to build. Here was um, MVIS, right? And so it broke out initially on Thursday off this 10, confirmed this 1088, uh, excuse me, 109011, and went all the way to 1240. Great job for all you guys who caught that. Uh, as well, uh, UV, UAVS didn't come close to this. I think they actually even had some sort of um, some sort of funding. They did some sort of shelf registration. I think on Friday they got hit. Uh, Solo never got to nine eighty ten, but there were some pretty aggressive call buyers coming in for next week's uh, ten and twelve call buying. You should keep an eye on this ten dollar level uh, for this week if it gets there. Um, PBLA never got there. FT, FTFT did nothing. Uh, Six dollars needs to build. Only ran up a dime. Did absolutely nothing. So here was this six dollar break. Literally only went to six ten and it completely died. Uh, this one did nothing. Uh, Doc, you had a nice little move here. Two forty seven fifty. Two forty eight needs to build. Uh, I still like it this week. I, especially Zoom woke up as well. So if the money flow goes back into these stay at home stocks, this could be a good one. So here, here's the two forty seven. Uh, 248 area went to uh, 251. It still looks higher. Uh, check the earnings date on Docu just to see exactly uh, when they do uh, report. Uh, ZM by far was the biggest trade of the day. Uh, for all you guys who caught it, for all you guys who are still long, fantastic job again. They're coming for the 430s, 460s, 470s for this week. Here's the channel we've been talking about a nausea. Uh, 400, 405, big spots, huge spots actually, and Zoom. Uh, closed at the highs. It just absolutely exploded. Uh, took out this 405 level. There wasn't even really a downtick, if you really think about it. Here was the whole channel here off this 400. There literally was not really a downtick in, in, in the whole day on Zoom. Just a fantastic move. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are still long this thing uh, over the weekend. Uh, Wimmy, nice little spike. Uh, B zone, I still like. Didn't trigger. I still like this 48, 50, 49 level. And again, for all you guys, uh, again, looking for uh, other areas for potentially put your money in. Look, I mean, look at this channel, right? Look at this. Look at this channel. I had this monster move here, consolidation, and now it's just sitting kind of sideways. If this channel breaks on BZON, you have another really big room. So keep an eye on this thing uh, for this week as well. Um, yeah, there was a nice quick little pivot on Tesla, not a big move, 460, 
uh, has now reje rejected four times in the 60 minute, needs to build. Uh, only a $5 move, but again, is $5 really the worst thing uh, you could possibly think of? So here's the whole uh, 460 channel here, ran up about five bucks. But at least now we have a definitive area for the up and coming week that we know if Tesla starts to confirm, you will see a, a potential test back to uh, that 900 level uh, on Tesla, MVIS, nice spike. Uh, Netflix never never confirmed at 554, uh, and that's about it. So look, we're, we're in a great market right now, um, euphoric market, euphoric market times 10. I, I think the most important part every single day, if, if you're a new trader, please, uh, if you didn't listen to any warnings that any uh, trader that's been trading for a long time kind of gave you for the last several weeks, just listen to us now, right? Just listen to us now. Money comes, money goes, but the valuable foundation that you set at your early stages of your development, that's going to you know, give you, show you the fruits of your labor down the road. It's not the, the one time you hit the slot machine, right? Anybody can go to Vegas, put in a $5 slot and hit for four or 500 bucks. Do it again, right? Do it again and again and again and again. The one time you hit the slot machine doesn't make you a professional trader. Guys, God bless. Have an amazing weekend. I am going for Patrick Mahomes. I know, don't bet against Brady. Don't do it. He's the GOAT. But Patrick is different. Chiefs minus three. God bless. Have a great weekend, everybody.